I'm in Gainesville, Florida with Bob Stefanelli. Stefanelli. I was born in Wishaw, Pennsylvania at home, May the 2nd, 1933. Now, what did your dad do to support the family? He was a coal miner. Okay. He worked in Kramer. Kramer was a little town where his coal mine was, mm -hmm. about 10 miles from where we lived. Now, how long did he work in the coal mines? He started there when he was 12 or 13 years old. You see, now how did it all happen coming down to Florida? Why, what, was, what precipitated that? What was the well, uh, my, my uh, mother's uncle came up to Pennsylvania to visit us, and he was wanting to enlarge. He, he'd done real well because of Camp Blanding being in Stark. <clears throat> and during World War II. During World War II. And so he had, had this uh, business there and did real good at it. And he wanted to open a farmer's market, kind of, not a farmer's market, but a uh, farmer supply kind of place, which Stark didn't really have a real good one or something. And so he asked my dad, you know, would he be interested in coming to Florida and getting out of the coal mines and um, operate the grocery store? And business was good. When we moved here, we hand over fist. What year was that? Do you remember the year? Yeah. Um, I was 13. So no, 1946. 40, when the war, war was over in 45. They, okay. Yeah, it was 45 okay. that we came. And you were only seven or eight years old when Pearl Harbor happened. Yes. Yes. Do you, do you remember that? Have any recollections? I, I can remember that, yes. You do? I do. Mm -hmm. I remember Pearl Harbor. There was a lot of talk going on about it. Uh huh. And uh, realized what it was to a seven year old or eight year old. Or what it could mean. Yeah. 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 So business was great. Business was great. Yeah, business was great. But then Camp Blanding closed. Right. Because the war was over. So all the servicemen left, in, they left Stark and the town just kind of. Mm -hmm. And the business shrunk. Shrunk. But we kept we kept at it anyway. We just kept at it anyway. And he stayed there. He had at least for 10 years. My uncle died. He died. He had a heart attack driving his truck back from Jacksonville or something or when he got back. I knew Dad had to have some help, and he didn't have any, and he couldn't afford to hire anybody. Right. You know, you got free help, you use it. Right, right. So I got a little allowance, but that was about it. So how long did you do that? I did that until I joined the Navy. And I didn't particularly care for Stark. Um, and I went to school there and everything was fine, but I had to work in that grocery store from sun up to sundown. And uh, even on the weekends, somebody called the house, could you come down here to the stove and give me a loaf of bread? Mm -hmm. I'd go down to the stove and get them a loaf of bread. bread. And do that. And yeah. I had to do that on Saturday and Sunday, or not Saturday, Saturday we were open, but on Sunday they didn't need, they needed some milk or they needed some bread. It was such a pain. I, I wanted to get out of there so bad. Yeah, yeah. I graduated uh, from high school in 1950, and I went in the Navy in 52. Okay, now was that a way for you to get out of Stark? Is that how you, was that a way for you to get out of Stark? Is that more or less? At? Yes. And why, get out what? of the store. <laughs> get out of the store. Get out of the store. And Is that why you joined the military? Basically, that was. No, your... I'd always wanted to be in the Navy. You did. Well, tell me what boot camp was like. Uh, it was a grind. There's a lot, of, a lot of marching and a lot of orders being bellered out, <laughs> and uh, you got to wash your own clothes, and you know they didn't wash your clothes for you. You had to do it yourself. You got a, a scrubber, and and you, you scrub them all, and you got to hang them up just right, and you got to tie them up just right, and roll them and everything, and tie them with the ties, and <laughs> put them in your uh, sea bag and have it ready to go. Of course, we had lockers there, but when you got more moving, everything had to be rolled properly and put in the in the sea bag so you get out of there with it. <laughs> I see electrician. I see. Intercommunications. Okay. Intercommunications electrician. And uh, it was out in San Diego. So I went back there and that was another three months in San Diego. Now, did, was that something you, you requested to yes. do? Yeah, I told them I wanted to get into electronics. And you got it. And they said, well, you're qualified for whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, with my grades in school and, and my aptitude test, mm -hmm. they gave me and all that sort of stuff. You, you want to be an IC electrician? Well, they didn't tell me IC electrician. I told them I wanted to be in electronics. And they said, you, you're qualified for IC electrician school. Mm -hmm. And we'll send you back out to San Diego. Diego. 
and uh, I'd had a real sweet girlfriend, and we decided to get married. Mm -hmm. And she was the beautiful lady in that picture in there. She was 17 years old, and I was 19. And she, you can't get married in Florida when you're 17, unless your parents say it's okay. So her parents said it was okay, because they knew if they didn't, we we're going to cross the border to Georgia because you'd get married at 16 in Georgia. And get married anyway. Yes. School, got through school, I was assigned to the Saipan, and it was in Mayport right at the time when I came back, Jack, just outside of Jacksonville, at the Mayport Naval Base. So I picked it up there and my, got my first cruise. We went up to Annapolis and picked up a bunch of... Uh, the midshipmen. The midshipmen. The midshipmen. The midshipmen. midshipmen. They were, they were gra uh, had graduated? No. No, they hadn't. No, they were, well, they hadn't graduated yet. They were midshipmen, and, and they send them out on a, on a cruise to see what sea duty's like or whatever. Okay. And of all the places we went, we went down to Sao Paulo, Brazil. My first out-of-country experience, I think. And that was a fabulous place down there. I loved it. And so we were, we were in Santos. And we stayed there. I don't know how long we were there, but it was a pretty good while. Pretty good while. Why? Why? What was the, Do you know what the mission was to go down there? No, it was just the the uh, cruise for the for the midshipmen. Was, okay. So they get to see some ship duty and mm -hmm. and know what it was like to be on a ship for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or whatever it was. Yes, mm -hmm. And uh, they got to be all over the ship and see what everybody was doing, you know, and just looking at what they might be involved with. Mm -hmm. So they, they learned a lot, I'm sure, but mostly we had fun because it was mostly shore duty. It was about nine years after the war. What, what did Tokyo uh, look like? Tokyo, Tokyo was fine. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there, the uh, Hiroshima there was, it was still flat. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, you know, about even getting close to it, but we did go over there and stood on ground zero. Mm -hmm. um, and they had this little building there that was a, a, like a museum. And they had all kinds of bottles that were melted, melted. and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And were you, were you, what was your um, impression when you first saw what it looked like? Well, it, it, was, it looked terrible. It was all devastated all around. You know, it was, it was like everything was fairly flat even at that time. I don't know if they started rebuilding or what, mm -hmm. because I don't think they started rebuilding back in that time anyway, maybe, mm -hmm. because that wasn't too far after the bomb had been dropped there. Nine years, so nine years after the war, yeah. essentially, it still yeah. was. There was still flat. a lot of rebuilding that had to be done. Right. Okay. Now, the, the closest thing we came to combat while we were over there, we uh, went down to, we picked up a load of Corsairs airplanes somewhere and had them on the flight deck and on the hangar deck and we took them down to down at French Indochina it was called at that time mm -hmm. to give to the French and uh, some of them they could fly off the aircraft carrier and yeah, some of French Indochina you mean in the Vietnam area yes so you went someplace in Vietnam it was in Vietnam yeah okay some port what's in, what's in Vietnam uh, we went to Vietnam and brought the Corsairs down there for the French who were fighting were fighting in the Vietnam yes. War at that time. Yes, yes. And what year was this? I don't know. It was in between that period of time that we were, before we started well, back. You did this cruise September 1953 to July 54. And I believe in 54, the French were defeated in Vietnam. I think it was 54. 54, I, 55. Or, yeah. I have no idea. And you were bringing... We, we brought American them some planes. Jets. We brought them some planes. Yeah. They're, they were Corsairs. They, they weren't jets. I don't, they're, they're well, I'm sorry. Planes. Yeah. And to be flown by the French. Is yes. that right? Yeah. We gave them to the French to fly them and, and do their battle with, with those planes that we had as mm -hmm. excess, I guess. Right. Right. 